I am back with science this time. So last time we touched on history um, and I told you what I'm going to be using the next school year with my three younger children. Um, and today I kind of wanted to talk not so much about what we will be using in science, but what I have used in science and just give you a quick rundown of how we felt about them, um, whether we're going to continue using it, if we're done using it, uh, and how that looks moving forward. I will update you as soon as I do make a final decision as to what Fully will be using during the 23-24 school year. Um, but for today, I'm just going to talk briefly about each thing showed here and then also two other science resources that I don't have to show you, but I do want to tell you about. So let's start with the Sassafras Adventures first. So this was something I was actually really um, hoping would end up being great for us because it just looked really cool. I had heard great things about it um, just from some moms online and some other charter school moms that I was speaking with. And so I was like, okay, we're gonna go try this out. Um, I got the Sassafras Adventures Zoology for my second and third grader, actually. Um, and then they both got their own little log book and it comes with the teacher guide as well. Um, so how this works is you would come to the teacher guide, um, chapter one, it would tell you everything to do that week so you can choose from a two-day option a five-day option i don't think it has a four-day option yeah so two or five days um and then it also recommends some other readers you can add to it a lot of encyclopedia work if you want to go more in depth um it comes with its own reader so this is cute it follows um some kids that just get basically time traveled or um, transport somehow to areas to learn about animals and habitats and things like that. So the book was really cute. My third grader got through the entire thing in the school year and he enjoyed that. However, he also was doing the log book and this is where he could go in and kind of keep track of different areas, habitats, um, it started in Africa. So it talked a lot about like the grasslands and which animals reside in Africa. Um, and he could come in here and do the writing portions. If he wanted to, he could draw. My son hates to draw. Um, if he wanted to, he could Google pictures, cut them out, glue them. He didn't want to do that either. He doesn't like to color. <laughs> He's just so funny. He's kind of at that age where he just wants to get through his learning and not necessarily like spend extra time in it, even though he's a strong learner and very smart. Um, he's just always quickly wanting to do other things that aren't schoolwork related, which is normal. So we got through, I think, to like page 34 before he was just over this. He didn't want to do the log book anymore. Um, I was fine with that. He wanted to continue reading. And so I kind of just let him do that every day. He would come in and read a portion. So it did have chapters, but then it also had like little mini chapters within the chapters. So it was easy to keep track of just read one portion a day. And it usually just focused on one type of animal and then moved on to the next. So that was really cute. Um, however, it just felt like a lot of busy work and he didn't always love doing the log book. Um, because of that, my kindergartner was recommended Summer's Lab, which is through the same company, and I'll link everything down below. But she got through a little bit of this. Let's see, how many weeks did we do in this particular workbook? Yeah, so we got through the whole first unit, which was all animal-based. So it started with frogs, amphibians, moved into like snakes, caterpillars. Again, there's some pages she didn't get through, 
just because she didn't want to. And like I said, I don't really push them. If they don't feel like it, we can talk about it. We can watch videos about it, but I don't really push them to do like the worksheet portions of stuff. Like I much prefer to just discuss with them something. And so we can have fun conversations of something that we're learning about. So there's birds, whatnot. She didn't get very far in this, however. Um, I think just because in the teacher's guide, it did come with like excerpts of like what I was supposed to read out loud to her. And I think she was just bored of it. It was very wordy um, for a kindergartner. She was getting bored. She didn't like all the black and white. Um, so I was finding myself like trying to supplement with YouTube videos or something that would engage her more during the short time that we used it. And she just never stuck to it. So I would say these two things weren't super successful. The book was cute, but all the additional pieces just didn't work for us as a family. Um, from there, for my kindergartner, I jumped into The Good and the Beautiful. This is the Science for Little Hearts and Hands. I have used their math in the kindergarten level and their level three language arts, which were really successful for us. So I thought, let's just try this, kind of use it as like a unit study. She can come in here and pick a quick lesson and we can see how that goes. And that actually ended up really fun and easy. She didn't always want to do it, but when she did, she would come in here, just pick a particular story. So say for example, butterflies. We would go to that lesson. <clears throat> I would read a little bit of the opening to her. A lot of times it would have like cute questions to ask, just like a conversation prompt. Um, and then it had the storybook stories to go with it. So this one in particular was the butterflies. And everything's just really pretty to look at. Lots of colors, lots of interesting things to point out and stop and talk about, like the caterpillar. And we actually did grow um, butterflies from like the pupa, blah, blah, blah on. I'm sorry, I don't know all the pieces still and I'm the one that did this experiment with them. But they did get to see the caterpillar stage into the cocoon and then on to butterfly and that was just really fun they enjoyed that um my second grader who is going into third grade also just really loves this because like i said she loves anything animal related i think i might have said that in the last video um but she aspires to be some sort of zoo worker veterinarian animal shelter helper whatever and this is just she loves animals. This is what she talks about. So this was cute. I would recommend, um, even if you don't follow the lesson plan, the book of science stories was just really beautiful to look through. Okay. So once we figured out my second grader wasn't going to do the sassafras stuff, I had these two books on hand from some of my other children who didn't get through them all the way. Um, that usually means it just didn't work for them or they got interested in something else. And because I don't push them to do the book work, I just have always had these on hand for the last few years. Well, this particular child loved this book, especially the big science book. And she comes in here and she, I told her even during the summer, like you're not invested in doing science throughout the summer if you don't want to. She wants to, she wants to come in here she wants to do the worksheets about the frogs and the birds and whatever else. So she's getting through this on her own. I just let her pick whatever she feels like learning that day, which lately has been just birds, birds, everything. So this is really cute. I highly recommend this book, um, as well as we have this master book, which I um, have also tried with my other students that didn't really get very far in it. But again, if she feels like it, she just comes in here, picks a lesson, like the five senses. She wanted to learn about that one day. So we did that, it's cute. This is Christian based. 
So it has the scripture copy work and then it just goes into like a short to the point lesson about that particular thing. So these are the two she's working out of and I'll probably just have her do that throughout this next year as well since it's just working really well for her. Anything that doesn't cause grumbling and she like chooses to want to do, I like to stick with that because obviously it works. Um, okay, so that's all I have to show you um, just like physically. I did and I do have some Science Shepherd workbooks um, which come with videos to teach the lessons. Um, but I put those in storage and I don't have them with me right now, so I can't pull them out for you, but I will link their website below so you can kind of go view that if you'd like. Um, that one was fine as well. They didn't get through it as much. The, the videos weren't super engaging. So I think they got bored on that. And some of the things that they would talk about just didn't really make sense to me biblically. So I wanted to rabbit hole and really research those specific topics. Like, for example, they said something about dinosaurs in that era and time that I didn't know about. And I wanted to make sure I was going and really like teaching myself that first before trying to explain it more to my children because it was creating just some questions that did not make sense to me. And I want to, as their mom and their teacher, be able to answer and truly know what the information is coming from. So we stopped using that um, after just a few weeks. And then because they loved the, well, they didn't love those videos, but they just love science and like experiments in general. Um, I was told about generationgenius.com a couple years back from our last um, charter school teacher and they just love that. I remember they loved it and I pulled it up and yet again, they just really gravitated towards those videos. So I highly, highly recommend um, that as a supplement to just whatever you're learning in science. You can quickly pull up an easy video about 10 minutes long and it's really cute. I think I also reviewed it on my um, blog just a little bit of more in depth about how Generation Genius works. So I'll link that as well so you can go back and view that. Um, but yeah, like I said, this isn't all necessarily what we're not using or what we are using. I will finalize all that decisions and I'll get back to you some way or another. Um, but for now, that's it. Hopefully this is helpful. Thanks.